Oh, hey, I was just reading my book. I didn't see you there. Um, welcome back to Mac Music Review. The, uh, the music review website, All Music, gave the album The Bends by Radiohead a, uh, a five-star review, which is pretty ambitious. So, um, today we're asking the, the to, today we're asking the age-old question. Is The Bends by Radiohead a five-star album? Let's talk about that. I think it's appropriate to kick this thing off by saying that I am not a huge Radiohead fan, which you may be able to tell if you've seen my best albums of the 2010s list, or even my best albums of 2016 where I did not put Moonshape Pool in the top 10, or like I said, my best of the 2010s where I did not put any Radiohead albums in the top 10 albums of the, uh, of the 2000s. I should say, my best albums of the 2000s list. I would link it in the description, but that is a horrible video. I messed up on the editing, so all of it, it's all sequenced the wrong way. So like the album cover pops up like on the wrong album and like it was, it was a disaster. That was so bad. It took me forever and I haven't changed it because I don't, I just don't want to. So I probably not, I mean, I might link it in the description if I usually forget to do that kind of thing when I get to publishing the video. But um, you know, I'm not a huge Radiohead fan. With that being said, I respect the Benz greatly, and it is one of my favorite Radiohead albums. I probably like this more than OK Computer and um, Kid A. Two albums that I have listened to fairly extensively. I actually reviewed um, Kid A, not on the channel, but back when I wrote out my reviews, I reviewed, that's the only, and I, I, that's not true, I also reviewed In Rainbows, and I really, really like In Rainbows. That's a great album. But this is also really, really good. The thing about The Benz is it is the most straightforward Radiohead album. Like, it's extremely 90s. It's extremely grunge. Everything about this sounds like the 90s. If you've heard a Soundgarden song, or, I, or what, do you, what do I say? Not Muse. If you've heard a Pearl Jam song, if you've heard a Soundgarden song, you've probably heard this before. And it just, it just fits perfectly in that lane, and it's really just that genre, that j genre of alternative 90s, done to the best extent. Not to the most revolutionary or groundbreaking, but to the the greatest, you know, it's it's at a very, very high level. Um, yeah, so music on this thing is really, really great. If you don't like 90s alternative, if you don't like this sound, you're probably not going to like this album. But this sound is very, very, very good. I mean... That's subjective. If you like, I'm saying they've, what they did is they took this genre that was really, really popular during the 90s, the dominating sound of the 90s, and they ran with it. And they just did a fantastic job doing all that. It's all done to a T perfectly well. Great vocals, great songwriting, great music. Everything about it is great. Not a single bad track on this thing. Um, you got songs like Planet Telix, which gets a little bit weird and has some cool instrumentation like usually this thing doesn't go so really outside the box when it comes to instrumentation but that one sounds pretty cool and has some weird stuff um high and dry and fake plastic trees are kind of beautiful kind of sparse kind of dry and kind of lifeless and that's what radiohead does like in all of their music it feels very like somber and dry and it creates these landscapes that are just kind of depressing kind of created by this album cover of like this mannequin that's kind of like screaming this naked mannequin and it's like yelling and it kind of accurately depicts how you feel when you listen to this music and finally the last song i would like to highlight on this thing is the song bones because bones is an absolute banger of a song it's epic it's awesome it's huge it's just it just sounds awesome and I love it for that. I love how awesome and epic and how just raw it, the energy on this thing is. You know, it, it gets me in the mood, man. But besides that, the songs for me kind of blur into each other. They don't want to, like the songs, I can remember the songs when I'm listening to the album, they stand out. But when I'm thinking about it afterwards, it's hard to discern the tracks from each other because they all kind of do the same thing. They all are in that sad, slow kind of vibe, which isn't a bad thing. It's just hard to talk about the album when I'm not actively right now listening to it. And I did listen to this album a lot to prepare for this review. Um, even all that being said, even with when I do think it really isn't the most revolutionary or groundbreaking album, 
it took this genre, it did this thing that a lot of people were doing, the 90s alternative grunge, and it did it to the absolute best possible way. It just did it so, so well without being revolutionary, without being super outside of the box. It just did a genre and did it perfectly, immaculately. And for that, I'm going to have to give this thing a 4.5 star rating out of 5. The Bins, man. I didn't think I would like this album. I'm not a big Radiohead fan, like I said. Um, I just think they're really overrated. I, I didn't really like... You know, what's funny, though... I'll link it in the description if I remember my best albums of 2019 because I really, 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 really liked Anima by Tom York, who is the lead singer of Radiohead. He's done a few solo projects, and that's like his most critically acclaimed solo project, and it was awesome. It was, an, it was basically an electronic album, electronic music album with, you know, singer-songwriter influence, but that was really cool. That's a really, really cool vibe on that thing. I liked it a lot. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's all I got for you today, so uh, have a great rest of your day.